there! Welcome to Sawdust and Cornbread. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining how I turned a hideous, peeling catastrophe of a kitchen wall into beautiful, shiny subway tile using only three ingredients. Joint compound, paint, and one more secret ingredient that I'll reveal to you shortly. Be sure to keep an eye out for Disney Easter eggs. You can find out if you found all of those as well as all the Easter eggs in this week's Sawdust and Cornbread blog posts in the comment section below in the notes section. So come along, let's get started. Before beginning the project, it's important to assure that your walls are clean and primed. If you're gonna do this in a kitchen area, use a degreaser on the walls before you prime. Your next step is to find the exact center of your wall or the area that you're gonna be putting the tiles on. Take a measuring tape and measure vertically and horizontally and find where those two intersect so you know where the exact center of the wall is. Put a little dot with a marker or something and then do the same thing for whichever stencil you're using. Measure it vertically, horizontally, put a little dot where the center of that is and then you can match the dot on your stencil up to the wall and you know exactly where the center of your project is. This is the stencil that I personally chose for my subway tiles. I didn't want the standard larger size. I wanted smaller subway tiles. I just really liked the way that looked. So I picked this stencil up at um, just one of the big box craft stores and I got it with a coupon. I think it was 50% off. So it ended up being like $7 and I used this for the whole project. If you can afford to have two of them, that would be handy but I appreciate using what we have. I went ahead and went for it with, um, with one stencil and I did rinse it off and on throughout the project once I got a buildup of the joint compound on it, but it has held up really well. Um, so it's just like a, kind of like a Mylar stencil. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but you can find these in any shape. So you don't have to do many subway tiles. You can do larger tiles, you can do uh, diagonal or octagon. Your options are really limitless, so it makes it a really fun and flexible project. You wanna tape it so that it's not interfering with the inside part of the stencil, the part that you'll be putting the jo joint compound on. So just put it on the outside edges. And realistically, I only used the tape for the first stencil that I made, the very first um, section of tiles that I made after that. I found that the joint compound did a great job of just holding it to the wall and it also made it easier to work with and move the stencil around as I needed to. To give the tiles the raised texture, I used a bucket of leftover joint compound. The substrate is also known as drywall mud. It's a great value for a big bucket if you have lots of project to use it up on. Alright, let's talk about a couple of options for uh, what you can use to actually apply this to your stencil. Because I know we don't all have drywall equipment laying around our house and that's fine. We want to use what we have to make what we want. So a couple of ideas is uh, a shim, like this is what you put under things to level them off. You could use the edge of a shim. You could use a paint stirring stick, apply it on there and then wipe it off to make it even with the uh, straight edge of that so that's an option or if you have it around this is just a cheap uh, two or three dollar at the big box store or the hardware store this is a plastic drywall knife so that would work really well I don't like the size of this I think it's a little big I want more control I actually used is not for drywall this is a little spreader that actually came with another project I'll talk about another day. It's with a, a vinyl cling that you put on your window to create a privacy window. And this is what you actually applied the vinyl to the window with. It's perfect. So if you have anything like this, I love the size, fits in my hand, I have good control. And this is perfect for this project, but you don't have to have this to make it happen. I just kind of start in the middle and then work my way to the outside of the stencil. That way I don't have any big ripples in there. Because if you press too hard, then you'll create a ripple and the drywall compound will get underneath the stencil. You wanna keep everything on top, nice and smooth. And I generally just cover it until, you see how you can see the outline of the stencil? I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see the outline of the stencil. Once that disappears, 
You don't want to have it too thick, but just once that, that outline starts disappearing, that means you have enough of the drywall compound on. So I just keep working from the middle to the outside, just like that. So I'm going to fill the stencil up and then show you how to do the next part. One thing I did is look at all of the tiles, kind of see if everything formed well, and if there's any parts like this right here where there's a divide that the joint compound got underneath the stencil, I have this little painter spatula or painter's, I can't remember what you call this, painter something, painter spatula, but you could use a toothpick, you could use a straw, you could use a butter knife, you don't have to have this tool. I would just go through and anywhere I saw a little flaw, I would just take this, scrape it right off. All right, the process for uh, moving the stencil to do your next section is the same, regardless if you're going over, under, left, or right of the stencil, same exact process. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to line my stencil up with a few of the existing uh, tiles to make sure they're good and, and uh, in a straight line. I'm going to take my level, make sure my stencil is level because I want straight tiles. So if I don't have to hold it anymore, and it's the same process. The only, th the only thing that's different is on this side, once you start moving down the wall is when you go into the existing tiles, you just kind of want to blend your compound. You don't want a big goop so that it's two different. Um, levels of joint compound, if, you, if that makes sense. You want it all to be smooth. Now keep in mind, when this is all done, we're gonna give it a light sanding. So if there are different depths of joint compound, that's, that's okay, we're gonna make it smooth. It's, it's really a simple process. I really think anybody can do it. One uh, tip for this part of the process, if you find that you are kind of boogering up the tiles that you've already made with your stencil, I took a blow dryer and just dried on a low setting for just like one minute, enough to, for the top of the joint compound to set so that if the stencil did bump up against it, it didn't cause any damage to it. And that way I could go at a little bit more rapid pace to get it done quickly but it really doesn't take that long to do even an entire wall. My wall was like seven by 10, and I was able to do this all in a few hours. But sometimes when you take your stencil off, the tiles will have kind of a rough or funny texture to them. Part of that is just the characteristic of drywall compound or spackle or whatever you wanna call it, joint compound. As it dries, it is prone to get some little pits in it, which are just tiny little air bubbles that pop and it leaves like a little circle or it might have divots and it's kind of a rough texture. Well, you can take care of that very easily. It's really fast. Just take an ultra fine or a fine sandpaper. This is what I used. And um, it's good if you can wrap it around a block of wood. That just gives you a nice flat surface. Or if you do have a sanding block, something like this, to put it on, um, that makes it helpful because you want it to have a flat, straight surface. If you use your hands, you're prone to kind of dig into the tiles, not a good thing. You want a flat surface. If you do happen to use a slightly heavy hand and erase your design, not the end of the world, just put your stencil back up there, line it up, put on joint compound, wait on it to dry, lightly sand it, and you'll never even know that you had done that. Once you finish your light sanding over the entire area, you want to go over with a vacuum attachment that has a brush on it and remove all the excess dust. If you don't have a vacuum attachment, you could always use a feather duster. Just make sure to get all of that residual dust off before you prime. And now it's time to add my paint color, whatever that is. For me, it was white. Um, a few suggestions. Don't use the big, the regular, normal size paint roller. It's just too much to handle on this project. 
you want to do small sections like one foot square at a time and a smaller roller will give you much better control um this is the size that i like it's like a three or a four inch uh roller but if you have to use this you can if you if you if this is the kind you have it uses the larger um rolls that you put on there unfortunately i don't have any right now to show you i like this i call it a hot dog roller it has like a foam roller that goes on there normally and it just um I don't know, the coverage is good, the texture is good, everything with this project was excellent. So if you have to use the, the, uh, the standard roller on a three or four inch roller, that'll work just fine. I prefer the sponge roller or the hot dog roller on this little guy, just so that you can work with it uh, better, have better control. I always, I'm a control freak. I want, I want the product to go where it's supposed to go and nowhere else. When priming and painting, you wanna think about the direction of the grain of the tile. When you see tiles on the wall, they, they generally sometimes have a grain. The subway tiles is a horizontal grain. So pay attention to think about which way you want the paint to go on your tile or the finished color to look. On mine, I did horizontal subway tiles. So that means I want my finished stroke to be horizontal. Now, in the beginning with the primer and the first coat of paint, you can go ahead and do that um, vertical if you want to. That, it, that actually will help get into some of the grooves and nooks and crannies. But your final one or two coats, you want to go with the grain. So, like I said, mine are horizontal. I finished horizontal with my little hot dog roller, sponge roller. And now, as I promised, the secret ingredient. I have stenciled my tiles. I have used my little tool to get all of the, the grout lines even. I've lightly sanded, I have vacuumed, I have primed, I have painted, and now you are ready to put on something similar to this. It doesn't have to be this exact product. It is a water-based polyurethane urethane for floors. And this is just, I had a little bit left over from when I refinished my hardwood floors. and. It is perfect to give a glassy, glossy ceramic look finish. Now, the product is very thin, so it takes very little, and you want to do thin coats rather than thick coats so that it doesn't drip. I used a tub, actually, this tub I think is what I used, just a tub I had around the house, put a little bit in the bottom, and I used a painter's pad, which I'll try to put a picture, I don't have any right now, but I'll try to get one and uh, show you a picture of what that looks like cut that in half, dipped it in to my little tub in, in my um, polyurethane finish, put it in there, and then I just ran it across the edge to get the excess off so I wouldn't have any drips. And again, I wanted to go with the uh, same direction as my tile. It was horizontal, so I, I swiped left to right all the way down the wall. I would start at one side of the wall on the very edge, work my way all the way over to the other edge, and then I would overlap one or two tiles start again and I'll go show that on my kitchen wall right now. Here on the top and I'd have my, my painter's sponge and I would come all the way across the entire top row of tile down to the end and then I would overlap two or three tiles to come all the way back to the other side. If I can make realistic subway tiles I know you can too. I'm so excited to be on this journey together as we create the home we want using the things we have. We're going to open a whole new world of opportunities as we look at the things we have and turn them into something else. Be sure to subscribe below so that you know as soon as a new video comes out, we post each week. I also put a link to our uh, blog below, all kinds of good information there, uh, post three to four times a week. Until next time, this is Laura Lee. Have a magical week. Were you able to spot all of the hidden Mickeys and Disney Easter eggs in today's video? Here's a quick recap of where they were all hidden. Also, be sure to check in the notes area below the video to see all the Easter eggs in this week's Sawdust and Cornbread blog. Thanks for joining us.